Holly, hello, and welcome to Confessions of a Refashionista. I'm Refashionista Sherry, and I am here to show you how to live affordably, sustainably. Because why? Being eco-friendly shouldn't cost the earth. Today, we are going to be chatting about seeing potential in pre-loved and secondhand items. And I am going to be sharing with you two absolutely fab two <laughs> absolutely fabulous refashionista tutorials from one absolutely frumpy thrifted item. So stick around for those. And if you love my adventures in upcycling, then please do subscribe and throw a like. If you've been with me for a while, then thank you so very much. I truly appreciate your support. And um, yeah, let me know down below the kind of things that you would like to see me doing. Do you want more sustainable lifestyle tips and tricks? Do you want more interviews? Do you want more refashionista tutorials? Is there something specific that you would like me to try to refashion or upcycle? Leave it in a comment below. And you know what? It's time to dive right in. This is Confessions of a Refashionista. So when I am looking for items specifically to refashion, clearly size is never an issue, right? Because these are not items that I'm going to wear off the rack. These are specifically things that I am looking for the fabrics or the patterns or just something interesting about the garments or items that I can then recreate and upcycle into something else. And I have the perfect example for you. But first, let's let's kind of chat a little bit about when you are going through the racks of the thrift shop or even when you are scrolling through a secondhand app, there are certain things that you can actually look for that, you know, will kind of ensure that you will have a successful refashion. Now, one of these things, of course, is that you have to like the fabric, like the pattern of the fabric, and the fabric or the material should actually be something that you are relatively comfortable working with. Like for myself, I don't particularly like working with leather and really, really thick fabrics. Now, one of those reasons is because I do have an old vintage thrifted machine and my poor machine just does not like working with those fabrics. And Another reason is I personally don't really wear a lot of those kind of things. So, so getting those kind of items for myself to refashion into something for myself isn't really the smartest thing to do because they're just going to sit there, right? I'm, I'm not going to wear those items at all. When I am going to shop or thrift in person, I do love to run my hands down the racks of clothing and just kind of see what, what feels cool to me, what feels nice to me. And I mean, without fail, it's always like vintage polyester. So I have no idea why, but that is always what I am most attracted to. And I think one of the reasons is because it is very, very silky feeling. And another reason, of course, they always have the greatest patterns and prints on them. I mean, vintage, vintage fabrics are fantastic for the type of really bright, bold patterns and prints that that I personally love. So when you are thrifting to refashion, that's something just to keep in mind is to really go with what you personally are attracted to. And as I said, it doesn't matter what size it is. It could be something that's very, very small, but you know what has a nice applique on it. You can chop out that applique and use it on, on a jacket, on a pair of jeans, on whatever you want to use it for. Or if it is something larger, of course, then you're going to have a larger amount of fabric. Now, a tutorial I recently shared, and I shall link it for you, is how I transformed a very dowdy vintage 
bridesmaids maxi dress into something that I am so happy to wear right now. It is perfect for fall and it is like a no waste tutorial because I am using the chopped fabric to create sleeves. So as I said, I shall link that below. It is fantastic. And with that particular tutorial, it was so interesting how most of the pattern and print was actually at the very, very bottom of the dress, which what a waste. And it looks so much better as sleeves. So now let's get to my, my example I have for you here. So this, I actually um, thrifted it online and it's, it's a doozy. It's interesting. So la la, can you see <laughs> this shirt? I mean, this has to be a late 80s, early 90s special is, is my thoughts here. But you can see here, this is, let me see if I can make a sound on it for you. Can you hear that? This is seriously 100% plastic. This kind of yoke here, it is, it is plastic. And so when I saw this, my first thought was I really did like the fabric because it is, you know, this kind of stretchy and gold lace, which is quite cool. And it is lined. But why? Oh, why? What is this? Why? This, I mean, it could be washed. I did wash it. I did put it in a rather thick lingerie bag because I was very concerned <laughs> what was going to happen to this in the washing machine. But it came out fine. Now, what I'm talking about when I say potential is a lot of people, they're going to see this and go, oh my God, that is the ugliest shirt I've ever seen. For myself though, I see it kind of as its parts. So this can be removed and made into a necklace. That was my first thought. I mean, that is like the epitome of a statement necklace, right? And you can see on the corner here, it actually will not be difficult at all. At blah, blah, it will not be difficult at all to add a necklace chain to either side here. And it is really, it is just stitched on. See if I can get close enough here with, you know, just single stitches here every so often. So it will be very, very easy to remove that. Next, I mean, the length is, it's just not a nice length at all. It's, it's like almost a tunic, but not quite. So my other thought then, of course, would is to chop this. And I'm not a fan of three quarter sleeves, but something that you can do with three quarter sleeves, which is absolutely awesome, is transform them into bell sleeves. And it's very, very simple. So that's exactly what I'm gonna show you how to do. We're gonna make a necklace and we are going to transform the shirt into a completely awesome bell sleeved top. So let's get making. For this double refashionista tutorial, all you need is a kind of frumpy three quarter sleeve long top. Now, if your top doesn't have something like this, it's totally fine. If it does, great, you can make the necklace as well. But if your top has kind of one of those tacky collars on it, I shall link my three, I actually have three tutorials for how to make collar necklaces. These three tutorials all use different methods. One is no sew, one is sewing, and the other one is kind of a combination of everything. So there are varying levels of difficulty, but they are all awesome. And you can have some really cool neck accessories when you're done. So you will also need, of course, your seam ripper, scissors, and your sewing gear. So I'm going to start with creating the necklace. And this is so super simple to remove. If you look here, I mean, look how massive these stitches are here. <laughs> so I am just going to start at the knot end and use my seam ripper, of course, to carefully pull out the threads. I mean, I actually don't really even think I need my seam ripper because <laughs> This is so huge. These, these stitches are so massive here. It's just kind of basically basted on. 
So now that the statement piece is removed, I'm going to set aside the top and grab my chain. And I'm not sure which clasp I want to use. Uh, the gold definitely matches better, but this smaller one might actually, you know, look nicer or be more comfortable. Hmm. Yeah, let's go with the big clasp. Let's let's match everything gold together. So now you want to make sure that your chain is the right length. And so to do that, all I have done is put it around my neck. And this chain, by the way, I've had it in my stash for ages since, you know, I'm literally for years and now, hey, I finally have a use for it. So it's okay sometimes to be a bit of a hoarder and hold on to things for a while because you never know truly when it might come in handy. And this gold chain is perfect with this. Now, so I'm just gonna line that up and you know what i think that that length is pretty darn perfect and maybe it'll be a bit lower when i add the clasp but that's fine now if this was too long then i would of course remove some of the links but it's perfect so now let's go make the necklace now it's always a good idea to use a chain that has an even number of links in it because it makes it a lot easier to separate and then add the clasp so mine has 12 links so i counted off six and then carefully with my pliers opened one of the links on the end and i can pop my clasp onto that can i yes and then close it up again and uh yeah i now have have the clasp for my necklace so now that my clasp is in place and i have already opened up the end link here i'm gonna do the same on this side now this i have actually not really come across before these links are actually welded shut here on the end so i'm having to use my pliers to carefully <laughs> cut through that weld so it can be opened so now all i have to do is slip my statement piece onto the link here and kind of close it back up tuck that in there securely and i have one side of my necklace complete and now on to the other side now on to the other side okay and this clasp is a nice easy one and ta-da so now that my fab new statement necklace is complete we can move on to recreating that frumpy top so to create your ideal shirt length all you have to do is go in your closet and find a shirt that you love the length of and then lay it on top of your shirt that you're going to chop and line up those shoulder seams as well as you can and then simply mark where your template shirt lands on your to be chopped up shirt and of course give yourself a centimeter or two of seam allowance la la and then you just chop on through so because the lining and the over lace fabric are both 100% polyester, they're not really going to fray. So if I wanted to, I could actually be done right now. I, of course, am going to go give both the lining and the exterior fabric a nice clean hem though. And now it's time to create our groovy bell sleeve cuffs. So you want to grab that chopped bottom and lay it out flat to find the side seams then chop on through one side and the other side and you should now have two whoops two wonderfully even 
pieces that will make fantastic bell sleeve cuffs. If they are not totally even, that's okay, but if there's a lot of excess fabric, then simply lay one on top of the other and chop off that excess. And then grab each piece and fold it in half with right sides facing, then go ahead and stitch that raw side together, leaving the top open to create your sleeve. And you now have two rather awesome bell sleeve cuffs. Now all we have to do is attach them to the shirt. So to attach the sleeves, you want to make sure you have right side facing the right side. So I'm going to flip my sleeve cuff inside out and I have my shirt right side out. So that way when I pop them together, they will be right sides facing. I like to actually start gathering at the seam point. So the sleeve, of course, has the seam going kind of down the back side of the arm. So I'm going to match my seam of my sleeve cuff up to the seam here on the sleeve. <laughs> this is a bit of a tongue twister to do this. And grab my little pin owl <laughs> and pin that in place. Now all you really have to do is do little pin tucks all the way around. And I really prefer the look of pin tucks, which is why I use pin tucks. If you want to, you can gather the fabric on your machine and then match it up or simply gather as you stitch, but I find this to be the easiest way. I mean, as you can see, I don't use any kind of measurements or anything when I'm doing this. I really use the eyeball method, especially for these kind of quick makes, because again, it does not have to be perfect. And because this is actually quite busy lace, it has metallic threads in it and everything, you're really not going to notice any small little measuring mistakes that might, that might be there. And we are, I think I do one more. And we are ready to go stitch this together. So I am just gonna pop over to my machine, stitch it together, and then repeat the whole process on the other sleeve. And my bell sleeves came out absolutely perfect. So let's go try this on. How totally fantastic did these bell sleeves come out? I adore bell sleeves and I've actually shared more than a few different tutorials for how to upcycle things and create these amazing bell sleeves. So I will link all of them down below for you if you are, you know, as big a fan of these type of sleeves as I am. Plus, I mean, come on, the necklace, the necklace is super duper sweet as well. And again, how simple was that to make? I mean, you can pretty much transform just about anything into a necklace and I shall link it down below for my awesome accessories ebook as well. And that has, you know, tons of upcycled accessory tutorials in it. <laughs> and of course, for loads more tips, tricks, and rockin' Refashionista tutorials, as always, head on over to my refashionistasherry.com. Absolutely everything is over there. You can check out all of my ebooks, all of my hundreds of tutorials and pre-love style inspiration posts, my celeb copycats, my refashionista boxes. You can shop in my closet. Like everything can be found at refashionistasherry.com. And um, yeah, until next time, <laughs> stay safe, stay well, and I'll catch ya on the zigzag.